Hello, my name's Damon. I'll be showing you some basics and advanced tips and tricks for smoothing. Two of the final tricks I'll show I have not shown before, so those that have seen the other videos will probably want to watch those parts. I'll try to keep the basics short as possible without leaving anything out the best I can. Now this video is a bit overdue since the first time I stated that I was going to make some make a new video showing some new tricks. But when I stated that was when point eight was due to be released within a week or two. That turned out to be delayed a few times, and now here we are a month and a half later. As a few times things have changed in the past in large updates, and this was a big update. I didn't want to make a video that may or may not be totally relevant anymore. I'll start off kind of showing what I'd like to see for a smoothing tool added to the editor, then move on to the rest. So let's jump into the creator. So we'll just create a basic object, large, fine to work with. So, we'll start off with this palette. Uh, what I'd like to see for a smoothing tool is something along the lines of the painting tool. Mainly for the radius and strength. Uh, so you can just paint on here and it'll smooth it out. This way you can work on corners and edges. But, I'd like to see a radius such as this on the feather. So, you see this around your selection of the radius as you're painting to see what you're selecting or it's going to be smoothing out. Now whether they ever put that in I don't know but it's something I'd like to see. And now we'll start off with some basics. Basic smoothing, well for one thing I like having the grids on. It lets you see a little bit better. But some real basic stuff. Uh, first some controls. So you can select a single voxel but if you hit your up or down arrow you can select the depth. And depending on which way you face, the side you select will be which direction it goes in. And of course, if you hold down the shift key while doing this, you can add to your selection. And then if you hold the control, you can do a cross. So such as this, the area I select, that's highlighted in red. And the area that's not highlighted will now take out the highlighted area and do a cross through it. And if you held down the alt, then of course you can select an area to subtract it. And of course if you have a depth on there, it selects that. So those are some of the basics. Now, for feathering, say we'll take uh, a depth of 5. It'll select a radius like this. Now there's a few different variations of this. See if I just select on this face with no feather depth and pick a no depth, it just picks the one face. So if I delete that, let's reduce that a bit to three. So I can hit the delete key and it just deletes a little divot. Now I can pick a depth, we'll say three in depth, it'll select that but also select a bit more. As you can see, it concaves it in. It doesn't make a flat bottom on that third depth as it also concaves the top a little bit. Now, you can also pick the feather depth over here, which increases the depth on the bottom by three. So I got my three in depth that I've picked plus three which gives me a hole such as this, but if I reduce that to nothing, then you can see what it selects there. Several different variations. So we'll get rid of all that. Now, it can be done. So we'll select a big area. We'll try to go all the way through, show you that. Delete that, creates a nice smooth holes. The smaller it is, the it doesn't get as smooth. I'll reduce that to zero. The other thing you can get when you got these smooth areas, still got my depth selection. Just want to do one. You can select on this. Now if you hold the shift and hit your space bar, it goes up and it retains that shape. It also concaves in a little bit here because it's what's pulling in there. 
but if I have the alt to go to bring this down, then it will back up and reduce it to a non smooth shape. So we turn that back to normal. So now you can see the feather depth. Oh, let's put that up to 20. I shouldn't say depth, but how much it feathers out. You can see there, it'll feather out. Of course, if you do it again, picking on the wrong axis, it won't work quite the same doing such a large amount. Might give a look that you're looking for, but you got to reduce it, usually about half if you want to, like say, dig a hole. As you can see, it's concaving it in. You can continue with that. That's something you're wanting to do. And slowly dig a hole, and vice versa if you just do a singular hole. But the other thing you can do, I will set it to one, because the larger you are in this setting, it doesn't look as well. But if you pick this, as you can see, when I delete that, it just creates a chamfer in one direction. But if you hold down the Add tool, as you can see, it extends it here, but creates a bit of a chamfered edge. I'll show you here. See, that's uh, a different color, but if I pick this one to go down then it changes it red so it'll dig out that corner more whereas the higher you are it doesn't look as good two is not so bad but the higher up you go it might not always look that good on some things so as you can see there it starts to change it Now there's a few different things you can do with this. You pick in multiple directions. As you can see, it takes the corners a bit. Whereas that made that one red because I picked at another angle, whereas this one's yellow. Now if I delete this, it creates a nice chamfered corner. If you try it individ individually, of course, if you go over the same one, it does that. So if you delete this and then try to do this corner afterwards, it won't look as good. But you can also do this with a small one, but it won't be as good if you're doing it in multi-directional, such as this. As you can see, the corner removes more of that corner than I did by doing individual lines. Now the other thing, on an axis, now sometimes you might want to delete certain areas because you don't want to go over into another area. But if you pick the selection, as you can see it overlaps here. So we'll just show you on two different axes. It digs more of a hole out here in the center because it's overlapping and doubling that. You digging that part out. Whereas this is more of that chamfer that we've seen before. So if I cross over, it gives you more of a 45 than an actual rounded corner because it's digging that section out twice. Now 
Uh, another funky thing you can do here. Bring up the thing a bit. Right, if you select an area like this, shift and add, and create some funky shapes. Because it'll slowly chamfer off as you go up. You can only undo about 20 times, by the way. But you can do neat designs just because of this. So we'll do add here. Say add out here. And then say I want to, I can subtract an area. First you want to remove this. Like say if there's a something fancy over here but you don't want to get part of it. Just hold down your subtract key and remove that area. So that won't affect anything on this side. So now, when we go up, you can get some neat results. Might be something you're looking for. So the old way of smoothing this edge that I would want, like say if I wanted to smooth this edge, this is one way of doing it. So you can get a nice slope on it. See, that's the one I was saying if you didn't want that. See, this is number 13. So say I didn't want to do anything out here. Remove that. And delete that edge. So I can slowly dig my way down on one side, creating a, a look I want. That's not the edge I want. So do it out here. I can create an edge. It's a slow way of doing it, and you, if you watch my sped up video of the Bone Saber making, you'll be able to see me doing a lot of this, but I discovered a few different ways that I'll be moving on to here. When I did uh, the Skull Shield and the Tiger ATV, I found a few different ways of manipulating the voxels that made things a lot quicker, easier, to scope out what you want and then fine tune it from there on. So we'll move on to that. Start off with go to the ships and uh, no aircraft. So this is one I'll be uploading sooner or later. It's a battleship type. It's fairly small but it's jam-packed. Nice because you can put a lot more weapons and rotors and whatnot on it than you can with the standard model. So what you want to do on something like this for this new technique is first off create your basic outline especially if you're using a decal like this. It's best to use the decal when using this it makes it a lot simpler. Create your basic shape such as this or similar to this anyways then create a platform a bit above where your deck was poking through. So then this way you can carve some of it out. I've already done from one angle what I'm going to be showing you here. So this way you can create a, a nice smooth somewhat lines and you can fine tweak it from there but it makes it a lot simpler than uh, some of the other models where you're dragging up in here and deleting and adding, undoing sections. You can get a much faster result this way. So let's go to materials and we'll pick. First off you want to drag this all the way through your entire canvas. And I find usually about a four feather works pretty good. You might have to go up and down a little bit but depends on what you're you're doing. And of course it's best to put on your mirroring technique because if you're doing this on one side, you want to duplicate it on the other most times. And usually best to start off around here. See, this way it selects the underneath. This way we'll, we'll chip out some nice radius to follow this con curve. And you may or may not want to subtract this area. Yeah, for this, I'm not going to bother. We'll start off with this, as you can see, it chips a big chunk out of that. 
how far in or out you're going to be going. You might have to undo and redo a few times and change the depth and or the radius and whatnot a few times. But as you can see, I can slowly mine my way out. See, I might want to get closer on this radius, so I might have to come in a little bit more. That might be a little too much, but I can fine tune that later on with one of the other techniques I'm going to show you here shortly. As you can see, I can slowly chip away. But yeah, as you slowly chip away and move the cursor in and out, depending on how you want. How close you want it to look. This is just real rough, so not being too particular. As you can see, it's pretty darn effective. Now it won't it won't be perfectly identical to how smooth this looks on your actual model. It might be slightly different, uh, just for the fact that you got different angles that it's working off of the other direction that you did. But for the most part, it'll be pretty close, and you just have to tweak it from there. That shows you the basics of that. So then we'll just remove this upper layer, making sure you get rid of your depth so you don't delete your whole model. So we're only removing this top part. And see if we can have a look at it. And it's nicely shaped out fairly quick. You don't have to do a lot of stuff to it. And we can just do a little bit of refining with the other technique here that I'll show you. So, we'll move over to... I'll show you on this one. But the other thing you can do, I'll show you on the ATV one, is you can, for setting, as we did here, for cutting this out, you can select the depth. Yeah, let's go over to it now. So, we'll go to... ATV Camo. I'll upload this one sooner or later here, too. But, as this one, as you can see, let's go to paint, get rid of that stuff. Did the same thing from here on the side. I roughed it out in this direction, then I roughed it out in a direction that way. But, from the side, see on this one I actually did top first instead of side, then I did side, but for this, I set the depth. So, it only subtracted to this point. I didn't go all the way through the model like I did before. So as I roughed out along here and did these, so I didn't hit all the stuff in the back and sculpt at the top and bottom of these parts. Now, for this next piece I'm going to show you, there's one little tidbit that's probably, which is a little bit wrong with the editor or the way voxels work, is it doesn't mirror quite proper on this, so my textures here are actually hiding some of that defect. They uh, don't you'd see on some of the other textures, so you might want to change it if you're using this technique. So with this next technique, if you select certain areas, you can actually refine uh, some of the stuff. Before I was always selecting multiples of these. This is why I overlooked it. As you can only see when you select individuals. 
But the other factor was, as usually I'm doing this in multi-monitor, so I got three monitors, and this a right panel off to my far right and out of view, so I never really noticed it. And of course, the first way I showed you of smoothing, it doesn't show up unless you only select individual voxels, and it doesn't show up if you have the feather on and you select an individual voxel. It doesn't show up here. So if you turn all that off and select the individual voxel, well, now you got this new bar, voxel volume. Now, whether any of you have seen it or played with it, maybe you already know about it, but what it does is it lets you change the vertices on individual voxels, so you can fine-tune it. It takes a while, and there's a few tricks to it, but as you can see here, here's a sharp corner. So, right now, that's at zero, whereas if I pick a different one, it's at two or six, or like this one, minus 26. So we'll take this one, and now if we come over here and we change it to say minus 40, release the button. Now if you look here, it's sucked in before and after. Now the other thing too is you can increase it, decrease it. As soon as you let go of it, it'll change that. But before you click off somewhere. If you use the left or right arrow keys, you can actually change it by increments. And then as soon as you click somewhere else, like you can have your thing out here while you're doing it, but it doesn't change while you're using the little arrow keys. But as soon as you click off somewhere, it will change it. So if you're doing a large volume across an area, like you want to do, say I want to change this whole edge, Well, I can do it the old way, which it might not get the results I'm looking for, but I can change it by these vertices to change the style of it. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to do this to all the voxels all the way across. And basically, let you do the select the whole area and adjust that. Now, whether they do that or not, that'd be, that'd be nice, but may never. So you can do a lot of intricate detail in adjusting these as you want. Now, for something like this, it, what it tries to do as you're changing this, is it tries to maintain, depending on what you select, your minus or plus, the voxels around it, above, below, well you can't really select above it if it's in there. Here you can select above it but it will try to maintain a look to all the ones around it. So say something like this, go in here. Now we can change this to 100. And it gives it, see it gives a divot. And as you can see how it reacts to the voxels around it, if I delete that, it slightly changes it. So it makes it a little bit more sharp but the voxels don't react identically on all sides. They might be slightly different. So you'd have to adjust it per voxel on different sides to get the same look all the way around. But you can get some interesting shapes. If we delete these, well now we got a new shape. So that's at 100%. We can reduce that. And we can select the one underneath and change that one too. So you can get some interesting shapes and whatnot. And you don't have to delete these to get the ones on the side similar to what we just seen. You can just reduce it to zero. Reduce it to 99 and you get similar type thing. You keep the voxel around it, but you basically have an air voxel there. So you can get the same effect. You just, you can't reach the one like here, as you do here. 
because it, you have to delete that when you get at it. But the problem with doing this, like I said, it doesn't react the same way on all sides, is that my texture is hiding some of the defects you, you see here. Some stuff you don't notice, like from this side to this side, because it's so far distance away. But if we change the material, first let's remove the coloring. The coloring only helps slightly, ones that are long distance across. But the material is the big thing. So we'll select this area. And I will change this to more standard color. Fill. Let's go back to paint. Now as you can see on the right side, it looks all nice and shapely, whereas this side doesn't. It's kind of jagged and whatnot. Whereas, see the texture hides all that because of the way the light's reflecting off of it. But it's a side effect of voxels. It happens in a number of voxel games. It doesn't react the same way from one angle to another. Some have fixed this problem somewhat, but this game hasn't fixed that. So it's slightly different from one side to the other. Little problem with the engine itself. Hopefully they fix it at some point in time, but not a big thing, we can cover it up. Well, that's all. Hopefully any or all of this video helped both beginners and advanced builders. So let's see what you can start building. Thanks.